All right, welcome to our next lesson on operations with radical expressions. This video is going to focus specifically on adding and subtracting radicals, meaning things with a square root in them. So a quick warm-up to get your brain thinking is just think back to just regular old terms. Think about what are like terms, what do I combine together, and then what does that answer look like? So look, 3x plus 2x simplifies to be 5x. We're basically just totaling up how many x's do we have. Here, 6x and 3x is 9x, 2y and 4y is 6y. Again, you can only combine things that are like terms, meaning same variable and same exponent. So 2x squared and 4x squared is 6x squared, minus 3x plus 7x is plus 4x. When they're next to each other, when they're being multiplied, we multiply the variables and the coefficients. So 2 times 4 is 8, x times x is x squared. So we're going to do the same thing with our radicals, but we have a couple of rules. So first is make sure the radicals are in simplest form. That's what we worked on in the last unit, when we would take a radical and break it into its pieces to see if we could pull out any perfect square factors. In order to add or subtract radicals, the number inside the radical must be the same. This is called the radicand. It's the number inside of the radical. Okay? Just like in the numbers up top, we've got to have the same things there for those to be like terms. And then when the radicands are the same, then you can add or subtract only the numbers in front of the radicals. Remember, we call those coefficients. Okay? The radicands are treated kind of like variables. So like, think about this one up here. I added the 2 and the 3. I didn't add the x and the x. The x is what's being counted. The 2 and 3 are telling me how many of them I have. So here's an example here. We have square root of 2 plus square root of 2. Well, that's really 1 square root of 2 plus 1 square root of 2, which is 2 square roots of 2. Just like x plus x is 1x plus 1x, which is 2x. Okay. So let's see a couple of examples and try a couple. So here, same radicand, so square root of 3. I just add 2 plus 4 is 6. Here, same thing under the square root, square root of 5. So 6 minus 4 is 2. So here I've got 7 plus 2 is 9 square roots of 6. Here I've got 1 square root of 13 plus 5 square roots of 13 is 6 square roots of 13. Here I've got 4 square roots of 11 minus 1 square root of 11 is 3 square roots of 11. Here 2 square roots of 3 minus 6 square roots of 3 is negative 4 square roots of 3. So that square root term, that's similar. Think of it like your variable. It just kind of goes along for the ride. We're talking about the coefficients are doing the math. Which ones have the same? Or we want to combine those coefficients together because they're really just counting how many of that radicand do we really have. So now we're going to take it to where they're not already simplified. So if you remember, to simplify a radical, we want to break it into pieces where one of them is a perfect square. So 50 is the same thing as 25 times 2. Well, the square root of 25 is 5 square roots of 2. 90 is really the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. Square root of 9 is 3, so 3 square roots of 10. So when the radicals are not in simplest form, we need to simplify them first before we can start combining. Because otherwise we're not going to know which ones are like terms that could be combined together. So for this one, there's a little typo here. The first is simplified, but the second must still be simplified. So 27 we broke into square root of 9 and square root of 3. Square root of 9 is 3, so I have 1 square root of 3 plus 3 square roots of 3 is 4 square roots of 3. All right, so here, I'm going to break my 50 into square root of 25 times the square root of 2. Well, that's really 5, so 3 times 5 is 15 square roots of 2. And my 4 square roots of 2 
give me 19 square roots of 2. Here, 20 is really the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. But the square root of 4 is really just the same thing as 2. So 3 times 2 is 6 square roots of 5. Minus 2 square roots of 5 is 4 square roots of 5. And then the next one, square root of 48 and square root of 27. So remember, the goal is we want to have the same number left in your radical. So as you're breaking these apart, think of the idea of we want one of those terms, one of those factors to be the same for both of them so we can combine them. So for 48, I could do square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And for 27, I could do square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Well, that's really 4 square roots of 3 minus 3 square roots of 3, because I'm just simplifying my perfect squares. So I get 1 square root of 3. Here for this one, I've got 2. For 80, think of your perfect squares. That's going to be 16 times 5. For 45, it's going to be 9 times 5. So again, we have that common radical piece. 16 is really 4, so 2 times 4 is 8 square roots of 5. 9 is really, square root of 9 is really 3, so 3 square roots of 5, so I get 11 square roots of 5. Alright, hopefully that makes sense for us. Oh, we're going to stop there, and then part 2 is going to be on multiplying.